<laughs> and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on Ivan on Tech, we are of course broadcasting live straight out of Stockholm, Sweden, and we do the show each and every day at 8 a.m. Central European time, guys. I come to you like an atomic clock each and every day. Today we will be discussing something very important and extremely amazing, namely the fact that Bitcoin has a good chance to go to 10k before 2019. And this prediction, really this fact that it is possible comes from the stock to flow model as you will see. But at the same time, you know that Bitcoin is a wild beast. It can go to 10k, also it can go down to 5k, maybe even lower. Who knows, but we're going to discuss the positive possibility and also we will discuss the negative as well and most importantly you know that thanksgiving is here very very soon thanksgiving is the time where you go meet your parents you go meet your grandma your uncle your cousin and everyone else that is involved in your family and you know when that happens people usually ask you about bitcoin because you know that you are being involved in bitcoin so you tell everyone proudly that you are a bitcoiner that you're involved in crypto and usually when people meet during thanksgiving they will ask you about your project about your investments and we're going to discuss how you should handle it and how you really should survive thanksgiving because you understand that it is this year where people will be very very negative towards you and you need to be able to handle it well and you know i recognize myself because i've been through this so many times it really happens each and every crypto cycle you can see how crypto develops if you only look at thanksgivings what people ask and how people treat crypto in thanksgivings because obviously when everyone is mooning when we are mooning suddenly everyone is in involved and interested but when we're going down now everyone is negative so we're going to discuss that and most importantly it's all about the four year cycle so when i say about thanksgiving and how you can measure where we are in the cycle using thanksgiving sentiment you need to keep in mind that at the end of the day it's all about the four year cycle that we have in bitcoin and why why recessions why bear markets are the biggest opportunities it is the biggest biggest opportunity you have right now and really to be successful in this market i don't think that trading is the way to go for most people but it is to get involved in crypto and we'll be discussing this in more detail but as you can see guys i'm back in sweden and it is amazing I've been gone for a bit over two weeks and it's been such a blast. I've been in Singapore, in Hong Kong, although many people advised me not to go to Hong Kong, but it's been an amazing time there. Maybe we can discuss at the end how it was during the Q&A. And then also I went to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. We had an event with the UN, United Nations. And finally, I went to Tokyo. So there's so much to discuss and guys, it's amazing to be back with you. This is the first time we're doing Good Morning Crypto back um, uh, in the studio, back to normal since I left. And you know that I left more than two weeks ago. So I want to say good morning to everyone who is watching this live. Michael Golp, Billa Bubble, I'm not in America, I'm in Sweden. Uh, Terrace, Dennis, VUF, Berlick, Wolfman, Crypto Coatings, Sherry, Crypto Junkie, Charles Fuchs, Sander, everyone extremely welcome. Let me know which country you're watching this from. Are you from the US, from Europe, from America, from Brazil, from Indonesia? Write in the comment section. And as always, guys, let me know what you are drinking. Today, back to black coffee. No milk and no sugar involved now since i left we've seen such a crazy market and it seems to be some kind of um, pattern that we're seeing whenever i leave sweden the markets collapse when i get back to sweden markets go up again it's truly amazing because you know that i left for korea a month ago I was at Korea Blockchain Week and markets went down a lot. Then I came back, markets recovered. Now I went to Singapore and Malaysia and Hong Kong, markets went down and now I'm back. They seem to be recovering because now we're at 8%. I don't know if there is causation and the pro and the causation and correlation who knows but hey it is true that we do see 8 percent up in bitcoin we do have 10 percent up in ethereum we do have xrp plus four percent almost five percent the interesting thing right now is actually tether because the now right now tether is number four for the first time in a very long time usually bitcoin cash is number four but tether has surpassed uh, bitcoin cash and looking long term if they don't get shut down soon it is not impossible that tether will be number one on coin market cap when we're talking about maybe five ten years into the future because because they're really really used especially in asia and i recently came back from asia yesterday and you really see how much people are using tether it's really really insane 
campaign. Nobody really cares about digital gold there. And it's both good and bad. The good thing is at least we have adoption. The bad thing is that you do have adoption that is very centralized and very, very non-crypto related, really. It's all about open borderless cash for them. They don't care about the true nature of crypto, such as limited supply, such as uh, censorship resistance, such as using a currency that doesn't have any middleman, and instead they use Tether. It's really amazing. But also it really, really highlights that the only thing they need is borderless payments, especially if you want to take money out of China. The only, the only way you can do that is through crypto, really. That is very, very easy and understandable for most people. So Tether is huge. Looking at the big winners, we do have Storium 300%. Be careful, guys, because you know what happens after such a pump? Usually a dump. So be very careful, but congrats if you hold this uh, uh, coin, altcoin, exotic asset, as, as, we, as we say here, exotic asset. We have Fusion 94%. Also be careful, guys, exotic asset pumping a lot. Uh, XMR 53%. Uh, then you do have uh, Maker, but this is, I mean, look at this. This this is the issue sometimes when you when you look at DeFi you need to look you need to look closer. So Maker is really performing very well uh, at twenty five percent. But is this? I mean, once again, be very careful because some people try to put double uh, double coins. So this seems to be the real Maker. Uh, so Maker is up twenty uh, percent right now. But is it? I mean, man, is it the real Maker? I'm a bit. A bit uncertain. Let's see. Yeah, it, I mean, it seems like it. 535. Very, very good. Good to see pump in Maker because, once again, when you do have projects that are true, true value, such as Maker, and sometimes people, you know, it's so easy with ERC20. You just uh, copy a smart contract and then you call it whatever you want. So, therefore, you always need to be careful. But sometimes it's a shame because real value projects don't pump a lot in our market. Usually, you do see exotic assets pumping like crazy, but it's nice to see that Maker is up 20% and it is the real maker indeed and not some kind of uh, copycat because when you look at ERC20 they can always change the name to whatever they want but this to be uh, seems to be the real real one then we chain 17%, Steam 15%, so all in all, quite good markets today, congratulations, and you know, we needed that. We absolutely needed that after the days of slaughter. And slaughter, of course, comes from China. This is the thing with um, technical analysis nowadays. Uh, I don't know if you've been watching Richard Hart for the past few days. I have been watching Richard Hart. So he, he really drives home a very important point that you cannot just look at fundamental analysis. You cannot just look at technical analysis. They're a bit worthless right now because it's all about China, and it is true. China comes out, say something positive, we pump. Then they change their mind, we dump. China doesn't care about your emotions. He, it doesn't care about your triangles, your Fibonacci, your death cross, golden cross, all of that useless things, really, when it comes to macro events such as China and such as regulations and, their, uh, and really how they are portraying crypto to their population. Instead, you need to now look at three things. Technical analysis, fundamental analysis, China analysis. And China analysis is really the leading indicator right now. And that is what everything is revolving around. And as always, guys, we do have a collaboration with Bipe. Definitely check them out in the uh, link below. If you use the link below, you help the channel and you get $110 for free if you join the competition team. But be very careful. Trading is very dangerous. And for most people, DCA is better. But if you're truly ready to enter the Coliseum and be this gladiator, as Mr. Christoph describes it, then use Bybit, because it's better than BitMEX and Deribit and other trading platforms, to be honest with you. Finally, this is what ha what is happening right now. Extreme fear. Extreme fear because a few days ago, you, you probably know it because it's from November 22nd, but I really did, didn't have a chance to talk about it because I was traveling. Basically, China came out and said that, hey, all ICOs, IFOs, IEOs, SCOs, they're all unauthorized illegal pub public offerings and security issuance events, and potentially illegal fundraising, financial fraud premium schemes, and other illegal systems. So this is really what set off the entire dump that we've been having, down to 6.6k, really, 6.6. And now we have recovered a bit since then, but you understand that it's all about China at this point. And it's all about short-term news, short-term news, short-term events, because you know that things change very quickly, especially when it comes to China. Next week, they're bullish again. Next week, they say something positive again. So when you see these kinds of events, realize it's not life-altering, not life-changing. And when you are 
when you are very, very leveraged in this market, you will be eliminated. So this is why it's so important to either DCA and or have some other strategy because there's so much emotion right now in the YouTube comments, in Twitter, everywhere. People are very emotional because obviously when it comes to these dumps, people are losing a lot of money. And when it comes to these kinds of event, people are not really prepared and not really ready for it mentally. Why? Because they take two big positions. So always, always try to not make big bets in crypto because the markets can move suddenly against you and very, very brutally against you. So never make big bets, instead spread them out. And this is what Bit Bitcoin Macro says on Twitter, which is very, very true. You can instantly tell who is financially comfortable and who is over leveraged, trading with 100% of, of their net worth. So it doesn't matter how smart you think you are, you will not time the market correctly because you don't have any chance to do that even with the best triangles on your chart, you still it's still worthless to be honest with you because you do see China coming out, US coming out, anyone can come out at any point and still break everything and still really, really make the price go in whatever direction they want. So be very careful guys, never trade with too much money in this market and never be exposed with too much in the short term. Think about long term. But still, according to plan B and according to stock to flow model, 10K plus is not impossible. And you understand that it's not something unusual that we're witnessing right now. If you look at the stock to flow model right now and where we are supposed to be when it comes to his calculations and his model. And by the way, he's saying that this is a bit unusual in terms that Bitcoin is so cheap. It is not entirely outside the model, but we've never seen Bitcoin be so cheap just right before the halving, as you can see right now in the, in the price chart compared to when the halving comes and when the prices are supposed to go exponential after the homing. So if this model holds, we're still in the acceptable range and we're still not breaking stock to flow. Although, although it is a bit unusual that we're so cheap, but he's very optimistic. He's saying that this is a great opportunity to, to get Bitcoin cheaply. And once again, really what I want to communicate to you here is that you need to think outside the box. Look, trading is fantastic. It's fun. It can also be devastating. It can also be very hurtful. Depends, it all depends on your risk. All depends on how you do it. Some successful traders like, you know, Eric Crown and others, they are using leverage. They're very successful nonetheless, but they know a lot. Most people don't know enough to use it. And most people just click, you know, 100x and unfortunately it becomes more like gambling than trading. But the best thing you can do is to actually get involved in crypto for real. Not just trade, not just speculate, but actually be involved and earn crypto. I know it sounds a bit cliche because you've been hearing it so much. Andreas Antonopoulos have been speaking about the fact that the best way to get Bitcoin is not to buy it, but to earn it. And it is true because you realize that the biggest biggest opportunities are in building. It's not in trading. Look at the billionaires in this space. Look at the most successful people in crypto right now. For example, Brian Armstrong from Coinbase, CZ from Binance. Uh, really, anyone you look at, they have built something. Even Winkle Y. Winkle was twins. Do you say Winkle? One Winkle was two. Winkle Y. Is that how you say plural? I'm not really sure, man. But hey, this Winkle Wars guys, they're also building. Look at Gemini. Look at their progress. So either you are extremely early and big investor or you're building something. In order to be like Winkle Wars or to, in order to be like Tim Draper, because both of them initially just bought in with millions of dollars. You need to be rich from the start. But if you look at rag to riches stories, it's all about builders. It's all about builders and even these, you know, millionaires that went into crypto, such as Twinkle Y, such as Tim Draper, they're also building, although they really don't need to, but they realize to truly, truly harness the potential of this is to build is to build and not just to speculate. So Tim Draper, Draper is investing in many startups, in many crypto projects. Uh, Winkle White, they have Gemini. You look at everyone else who went from zero to billionaire in the space, they're, they're all building, all building something. So this is very important. And now back to our cycles. Because cycles is what we're facing right now, and this is everything that 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 you need to keep an eye on, uh, these cycles. Because if you're not keeping in mind the cycles, you might be too concerned with short-term events and you're not zooming out enough. You're not zooming out enough. So I love this article by, uh, this is a famous guy, sorry, Ryan something on Twitter, I forgot his name. He's very famous when it comes to, when it comes to Ethereum and you should subscribe to his bankless uh, newsletter, like Brian something something. Do we have his name? R-S-I, Ryan Sean Adams, I think. 
anyway, I, I liked his uh, um, post that he created uh, literally yesterday, on November 25th, and I'm subscribed to his, uh, to his uh, new newsletter. Anyway, he said the following, that two years ago, crypto was booming, and I remember those times. I mean, guys, sometimes when I think about 2017, it brings a, a tear to my eye. I mean, man, those, was, those were so amazing times, and we had so much anticipation, so many expectations, so many people were so excited and interested in crypto. And you know, when you had Thanksgiving at those times, you met your family, you met your grandma everyone was very interested very excited you know your cousin who knows a lot about blockchain was bragging about how he made on uh, how he made the fortune on ripple that year then you had your uncle who was a corp corporate executive he was a bit skeptical calling crypto a tulip mania and um, now you understand that everything has changed so this year you will not be as uh, positive and people will ask you hey what what is going on with your crypto is it down is it down i told you it's gonna go down i told you it's a mania so now you understand that you're gonna hear things such as i told you so and your cousin who made a lot of money on xrp he sold it after the crash so he bought high and sold low as most people that are uneducated and he's now into cannabis stocks so he's not in crypto he's now into cannabis and you understand that we've seen this before 2017 was 2013 mainstream was curious tourists were euphoric and skeptics were yelling bubble this is by the way when i entered <laughs> in 2013 I was I was entering uh, at the top guys and uh, I was part of this mainstream curious so I was like hey man what is this uh, uh, Bitcoin thing <laughs> so I went into the community and I became part of the community in 2013 then we did see the collapse as usual, you understand that when something goes up a lot, it also comes down. So 2014 was the collapse. Everyone was saying to me, hey, I told you so, it's crap, it's garbage. But this is, by the way, where I harness the opportunity. And not to blow my own horn, not to toot my own trumpet, not to play on my own drum, you get the point. But look, I've used the opportunity in 2014, and this is what I'm telling you. Right now, it's kind of like 2014, and more correctly, it's a bit like 2015, 16. But still, you understand that at that time, I was just studying. Nobody really cared about crypto, but I was studying. And I positioned myself in a very good way for the next bull run, which happened in 2017. Most people just exited. And this is what I'm telling you. Instead of just speculating, you need to get involved. I'm telling you, get involved. Start working in crypto. Start contributing to the space. Not only by chatting and trolling on Twitter. Nobody cares about that. Too many people spend so much time debating on Twitter. But nobody has ever been successful just by debating and leaving like negative comments. Too many people spend their time doing that. But remember, nobody remembers a critic. And by the way, no critic has become a billionaire ever in any space in any space. Look at Elon Musk. That guy is building things. He is successful. Then you have a bunch of critics talking, talking bad about him, spending so much time. So much time they could have spent building something. So much time they could have spent actually creating wealth for themselves. And by the way, there is no shortage of wealth as long as you have that mindset. When somebody is successful, it doesn't mean that it is somehow taking away from your success. So the same thing is happening Right now in crypto, you see a lot of people building and a lot of critics. These critics, they're not helping themselves in any way. And uh, those guys who are building, they don't even care about the critics, to be honest with you, because all of them know that critics was, will always be there. And so uh, continuing on that thread, uh, 2018 was 2014. Everyone was super negative. This is where you and everyone else needs to use the opportunity. This is where CZ, by the way, also used the opportunity. This is where CZ from Binance actually started his venture. It was, I mean, if you think at how, how long time it took to build Binance, they launched in 2017, but he probably started thinking about it in 2014, 15, 16. It's not like CZ just woke up in 2017 during the bull market and said, hey, we're gonna build Binance. And you know, right, boom, 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 it's now finished and it's now making 250 million per quarter in profit. It. more than Deutsche Bank, more than Deutsche Bank, guys, think about it. No, you gotta use the bear market. That is why on the thumbnail, it says the biggest opportunity yet is to use the bear market, guys. And then you do see 2015, it's kind of where we are right now. Mainstream is still doubtful. Tourists are long gone. I mean, we, we had so many tourists, guys. So many tourists coming into the space, buying something, getting wrecked, completely wrecked, selling on the bottom and then saying goodbye. This is a scam. This is a bubble. And, uh, and that's it. So they're still gone. And the skeptics are uh, yelling the incumbents are the successors. So, hey, 
look, this we've seen it before. It's not something new. It's not something that is completely out of the blue. We will probably see it a few times more. These cycles, really, it's all about the fact that we still don't know the value of Bitcoin. And the inflation of Bitcoin is still so high compared to what it will be in like 12 years that uh, when in inflation cuts in half during a halving, it is a significant event. And the knowledge is still not spread out that the halving is usually not priced in. If, if you look at it like a year before, even half a year before, and even it usually gets priced in after the fact. If you look historically, it's very interesting. I mean, theoretically, halving should be priced in because we all know that is going to happen. But the knowledge and the spread of information is bad. The market is not efficient. So therefore, it is not priced in usually. Usually it gets priced in just like a few months afterwards when people really start feeling the effects of the halving. So as long as we have in, in Bitcoin inflation that is quite significant, we will have these cycles. Maybe in 8-12 years, the cycles will really calm down because then when inflation cuts in half, it doesn't really mean as much as it does right now. But until then, strap in, be prepared, mentally prepare yourself, don't make large bets. Like here, you can instantly tell who is financially comfortable and who is over leveraged because if you're pissed off and emotional, you've already lost. So don't make big bets, make small bets all the time. It's like Crypto Lark said, you know, if you bought Bitcoin once a week for the last year, you would be up 49% in USD. 49%. It's better than any stock market, anything that has performed this well in, uh, in 2019. And you don't make any big bets. Just small bets once a week, you buy Bitcoin, never feel stupid. That, maybe that is the most important thing that I'm always trying to tell you guys. You'd never ever want to feel like a, like a dumb person. And you feel like a dumb person when you make a big bet, then market goes against you, you get liquidated, you lose all your money. That is when you feel stupid and you either get liquidated or you sell at the bottom. That is what, what What's happening so don't make too too big bets now before we get into the chat guys by the way guys i love the chat this is maybe my most favorite thing i forgot to tell you that we're actually giving away access to our crypto academy where you can learn how to program on bitcoin on ethereum by the way we teach you programming from scratch and the reason why i'm so passionate about the academy is because i truly truly believe in this i truly believe that you should be building in the bear market and to help you we do have amazing courses like how to create blockchain dApps, how to build on Bitcoin, how to build on Lightning. The only thing you have to do is to write what you have learned in this video. So just write it in the comment section and tomorrow I will pick the winner. So write what you have learned in this video. And um, uh, for all of you who, who still want to join, go to academy.ivontech.com and learn. So really, I'm also building. I'm also building in this space and my goal is to build uh, this, uh, this platform. And it is, by the way, the largest right now because right now we have 20K. This number is outdated. We have 20k students already. And you know that e-learning is huge. I mean, we're still in the early days of e-learning. So definitely I'm seeing also my opportunity to grow maybe the world's biggest platform on, in e-learning. You understand that nobody will go to universities in 10, 15 years. It's not going to be like today. Everything is going to be online. E-learning is going to be bigger than e-games and like everything else really that is happening online because people will have more time. They will not work as much. You understand that everything becomes so much more uh, automated. So people will have a lot more free time in the future. And also many more people will get internet access, meaning that people will really focus on education and better themselves. And I mean, I'm just giving you an example. I'm building in the bear market. What are you doing? Because if you're only trading, guys, you're setting yourself up for failure. You gotta be doing something. That is where most uh, returns are. And before we go into the chat, I just want to tell you about our sponsors, which is Zapego. Basically, these guys, they have built an app where you can pre-order at your favorite places like coffee shops, food outlets, restaurants, bars, event, events, stadiums, and other venues. You can do that through Zapego. And basically, it's all about reducing the time wasted in line. So if you, you pay with Zapego, you don't have to wait. You basically pre-order your spot. So they make it very, very smooth. And now they do have this contract with Verdetta epos uh, so i haven't really used them but they seem to be big in uk so according to numbers verdetta is used by the majority of uk's high profile sports venues including over 60 percent of premier league football clubs so they have a partnership with those guys apego is working with these guys and they have um, 
Uh, for example, uh, collaboration with Arena Manchester, Echo Arena Liverpool, Rico Arena Co Coventry, Wembley Stadium. Guys, I'm not into football, so sorry if I don't pronounce this correctly. Like Arena Birmingham, Resource World Birmingham. Anyway, these Verdetta Epos, they are working with all of these big venues. I'm not into football, so I'm not really sure how to pronounce most of it. But you know, like English football, it's very big. Uh, and so now with Zapego, um, Zapego gets access to that ecosystem. And they recently entered crypto so you know that everyone wants to be in crypto and they did launch a token which went from like one cent to 26 cents and they're trading right now on uh, on uh, in a chinese exchange and uh, so definitely check them out guys they're sponsoring the channel thank you so much Dapego. and uh, now we go into the uh, the chat and as you can see here it's working on apple store app store and google play and uh, yes people are wasting a lot in queues and they want to eliminate that eliminate queues and also now entering crypto so definitely check it out also their telegram group you can find in the description went from uh, zero to 5k members very quickly and also a final thing guys let's work together i, I have as a reminder here um uh, flag of south korea and russia basically i i want to experiment with translating my videos into south korean into korean like it's I, I guess it's the same korean in both north and south so guys if you know korean and you want to translate the videos uh, email me contact at ivanotech.com okay email me contact at ivanotech.com and let's work together because i want to try it i want to try it basically create subtitles for my videos the same is in russian uh, so if you know Russian and you want to type Russian a lot, because obviously this job is going to be a lot about typing, also email me contact at imontech.com, but you really gotta love typing, or the guy you refer, he gotta love, he or she gotta love typing, because it's gonna be a lot of typing, translating the videos, you understand how much I speak, it's a lot of speech, so a lot of typing, but anyway, contact at imontech.com, also, you know, if you know Mandarin, I, I, I'm up for Chinese as well, L let's do China as well, I was in Hong Kong, people recommended me Billy Billy, let me know if you know this thing with Billy Billy. People are saying Google Google Translator, but yeah, I mean, you understand Google Translator is not really that good. I want quality. I want quality. Max West says without questions. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, I could have translated this in Russian myself. Я говорю по русски, but unfortunately, it will take too much time for me. So if you have someone who likes it, you know, in Chinese, in Russian, in South Korean, what else is interesting? I really want to get into this, you know, emerging markets. Let, let's do Turkey. Turkey, Turkey, boom. If you if you know Turkish, let's try that. Anyway, all of these emerging markets, I want to get into them. Anyway, let's go to the chat. What's happening? When will you explain the new multi-collateral DAI? Um, I'm not sure what to explain about it. It's kind of like the same, like a normal DAI, but you can use different um, funds to, to, uh, to have as collateral. And the only issue that I see, which is a big issue, is that DAI is not a DAI anymore. DAI is now SAI. And uh, I think it's a bit uh, misleading. It's a bit confusing as well. So you understand that now, I mean, from the beginning, DAI was that you have ETH as collateral. Now DAI is that you can have tokens as collateral, basically exotic assets as collateral. Uh, and now DAI is, it means something else. It doesn't mean what it used to mean. Instead, SAI is when, when, when you only have Ether and DAI is when you have multi-collateral. But before it was that DAI was Ether and there was no multi-collateral option. So they have switched a bit, just beware of that. I, I don't really like it, to be honest with you. I, I mean, I like the concept of multi-collateral, but I don't like the fact that DAI as a, as a, um, as a brand now means something different. Uh, I don't really appreciate that, but hey, we're going to see how it develops. Why not Spanish and Arabic? Um, maybe Sp Spanish and Arabic is interesting as well. Uh, definitely Arabic, maybe Spanish as well. Anyway, guys, e email me, Let let's let's do like all languages. Uh, the big languages. Uh, nice, Bulgaria, what's up in Bulgaria? But it's gotta be big, so Spanish is big, obviously Arabic is big as well. I'm not too familiar with like Arabic um, uh, communities. I mean, do they use YouTube? Do they have something else? Uh, because my thing is that with China, we will be publishing on Billy Billy, okay? And um, with Korea, we will be still publishing on YouTube, but just adding subtitles. Uh, with Arabic, I'm not sure. Maybe we should just add Arabic subtitles on this. Maybe that's it. In Spanish, I mean, they all have YouTube, so we will be just be adding. So yeah, guys, uh, definitely email email me if you if you have. Um, how about Greek? Uh, so, Sammy, Greek would be good, but it's, for me, it's a bit too small of a market to really, you know, expand financially into that. Because you understand that 
I will need to pay these guys who translate. So Greek, I will have to wait with that. I mean, maybe if we have community translating for that, it, I mean, I can just put the subtitles, but I, I'm looking for like big, big, massive languages right now. Greek would be amazing, but uh, b but not right now. I just, I'm experimenting with this and I will go first on big and then on smaller. How much you're paying? I mean, we will do, we will have a agreement. We will f find, but it is paid. Like it is paid, uh, of course. Depends on which country. I need to check what is the average salary in those countries and then we'll go from there. Uh, let's see, Pro die would be good. Uh, die would be Google translated very badly. <laughs> or Ah, okay. <laughs> right, that's true, that's true. It sounds like death, yes. Do you think China calling the shots at the moment a better return of investment will come from Chinese alts? I love VeChain. Uh, look, maybe, maybe. VeChain is pumping a lot today even, as you can see. But at the same time, the interesting thing with uh, China is that they are calling the shots. At the same time, many Chinese alts have a lot of bag holders. So it's pros and cons, okay? Pros and cons. I can help you with Spanish. Nice. Email contact at ivontech.com. German. Uh, I mean, would be interesting, guys. I just want to start with one, two. But yes, <laughs> I mean, we want to reach many. Um, we want to reach many languages. You need Turkish. It's growing. I know. I know. I mean, Turkish. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I've heard. I've heard. I'm getting reports all the time from Turkey that is 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 growing. It's amazing to see. German also amazing, but. I feel that German, they have a bit of an established community. You do have, for example, Julian Hosp, you do see Sunny Zikri, MM Crypto, they're all serving the German market. So uh, I want to go into markets that are a bit underserved from uh, like big influencers that are international. So German, I mean, is big, but I feel that there are internal like influencers there already. Uh, but I, I was in uh, Hong Kong and people really recommended me to do Chinese uh, and publish on Billy Billy. So we'll try that. Hopefully I will not get censored. <laughs> that is the thing with China. Like, sh should I really do it? Because uh, I, I mean, they're not too happy about crypto right now, but we'll see. How about Malaysian? Well, I mean, it's also interesting. But once again, guys, uh, email me if you have a language and then I will respond to you. And we will start with like one, two as an experiment. Estonia, nice, but man, Estonia is like uh, 2 million people or something. <laughs> it's an amazing language, but too small. Too, too small. Yes, YouTube is blocked, but we're gonna do Billy Billy, I told you, Matthias. We're gonna do Billy Billy. Uh, I, I just found out about Billy Billy. That's why you need to travel, guys. I never knew this was a thing. Apparently, this is... I mean, look, in China, there are several different YouTubes. There are, like, the old ones. I don't even remember what it is. It's like... Weibo, I think, is Twitter, but there was like a big YouTube that is a big old, that is a bit old. Then there is Tencent Video, and then there is Billy Billy. So this one people recommended to me, like the the one that is hot right now. So the community is a bit different because there you don't have like you know one YouTube that is dominating everything. In fact, they they have many and. Um, uh, and they are uh, is, is competing. They have good competition between the platforms. I think it's very interesting. Uh, so Billy Billy will be my choice, but I don't know, maybe it's like too childish. I also heard that many kids use this. So, I mean, it looks, it, this looks insane. <laughs> like anime and stuff. We'll see, we'll see, guys. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> Polish language, Billy Billy is original. Ah, nice. Wow, Hindu would be big. But I'm not too too familiar with Indian community also. Like, is it, do you have like Hindu, everyone knows that? Or, I mean, I guess you'll get like hundreds of millions if you just have Hindu, so. But anyway, guys, email contact at ivantech.com. Please, please stop proposing languages here, okay? <laughs> Let's talk about something else. If you have a language, definitely go and, and email me, contact at ivantech.com. I will take a look, but uh, let's talk about something else. Uh, with ever increasing Ethereum adoption, can it be flip the market and become number one crypto in the next bull run? Uh, I think technology is very interesting. I mean, I mean, we do see so many great things being built on Ethereum. So I do think there is a good chance that it will really, really perform well. At the same time, it's not what institutional investors will ven venture into. It will be Bitcoin. So, I mean, it really depends how big the impact will be of um, big money versus just adoption in DeFi space, for example. It's very difficult to, t to tell, but to reach Bitcoin, basically, we need to go 10x from here in just Ethereum. 
in in market cap is it possible i mean absolutely we were at approximately 1.1k in the last bull run but you understand that bitcoin will go up as, a lot as well so I, I i doubt it guys i doubt that ethereum will flip because i mean all attention is on bitcoin when you look at traditional space they're looking at bitcoin i will translate into australia <laughs> nice 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 maybe you can add the accent somehow what do you think about matic i mean one of the best performing tokens of 2019 yeah, very well done both tech wise and also behind the scenes wise getting the market makers getting exchanges so it's a great project going forward i think they need to work on the community right now it's all about developing the community building and growing the community having projects built on it right now i've seen i mean look they they have had hackathons so people are exploring it but now we just need this inflow of users and inflow of interesting applications so what ethereum really delivered is DeFi. we can talk about ico craze for how how much we want but at the end of the day ethereum came back and delivered DeFi. Matic needs to do something similar they, i mean you do need to have people using it saw you on tiktok yeah i have tiktok so i have experimented with tiktok but i'm not sure my audience is there so look tiktok is amazing if you are funny you do like 10 second videos uh, I'm following, I'm trying to understand like what I should do there, but uh, I'm not sure. I saw like BitBoy Crypto do it, do some funny things. Uh, I don't really want to be doing this, you know, funny things, uh, 10 second uh, Vine kind of videos, but I, I mean, TikTok is so big. Maybe I should do something. I have TikTok, uh, but doing educational crypto content, I don't feel it's, uh, it's there yet. I mean, uh, I, I don't know, guys. I don't know, guys. I will take a look more. I, I'm definitely interested. Um, but I'm trying to see what people are doing successfully when it comes to education. And right now it's basically, you know, teens that do funny videos, have some music. I, I, I'm trying to see, is it going to be like the next Instagram? Because you understand that Instagram was also for kids in the beginning. It was also not for adults. It was also very unserious and you could not really, really build like you didn't have businesses on, on Instagram. Then it changed because the audience changed and the way people use Instagram changed. So I wonder if TikTok is going to be the same. If, if it will become this platform where you can actually build serious things and you can you can get eyeballs on, for example, crypto. Or will it be like Vine? It just disappears because it was like a quick thing that came and went. So this is the big question. Fabrice, my daughter is constantly on TikTok. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, uh, it's very interesting because it's very addictive. They have so addictive interface. I like it. I like TikTok a lot, and a lot and the numbers are becoming very big because when you use TikTok, you can view like 100 videos when you sit on the toilet for five minutes. So uh, num numbers become very big. Uh, yeah. So if you know Spanish, email me. Email me. Uh, it will be you've been to China, you know. Well, I mean, there will be many uh, different platforms. TikTok, I'm just wondering, will it be like big for grown-ups and for actual, where you can build something of value, like educational stuff, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Probably it will be. I think it will be because it's so big already. What do you mean by education? Learning to code or what exactly do you mean? Just the format. Look, the format. The format with TikTok right now is like, you know, you have some kids dancing, singing. It's, it's really, if I talk about crypto for 10 seconds, it, it will not fly. Look, it will not fly at all. So it's just like the audience and what the audience expects and what the audience really wants from TikTok, what they want to see. But I, th I think one great example is Gary V. Really, I'm, f I'm trying to understand how he uses, how he uses it. And uh, he has some success on it. Oops, 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 oops. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I need to show. But, but anyway, we'll see. We'll see with TikTok. Uh, what can you say about Tron? <sighs> Great marketing. I hope technology will catch up. <laughs> I hope it will catch up. But at the same time, you don't need that much. Look, the technology is basically all similar in, in all of these platforms right now. Whether it's Ethereum, EOS, Tron, like it's the tech is not the main differentiator. You don't really need the best tech nowadays. That Ethereum has the best tech in crypto. Probably not, but it doesn't matter because they do have DeFi and they do have momentum. It's just like any other industry, the best product doesn't always win. So Tron right now is not, I don't feel that they do have a lot of traction with developers or DeFi or anything else. The best thing they have going for them right now is USDT, that USDT, they have a, a Tron version. And so if it is good enough for USDT, Honestly, it is good enough for most projects. And you can, I mean, we, we can, of course, discuss how Tron started and that, you know, it has changed so much. And from the beginning, they had not a lot of things. They had not a lot of tech, but 
when you get so much money, it's easy for you to fix the tech, to be honest with you. When you get so much money in the ICO, to, to build a blockchain like a smart contract platform that works, you maximum, guys, maximum you can spend 500k on it. And then you're really, really spending a lot. To spend 500k out of millions and millions they got on creating tech is not difficult. And so that is what they have done, basically. That is what they have done. Will Bitcoin, fi will Bitcoin 5 GitHub controls ever up the block size? Uh, I don't think so. If anything, they will make it <laughs> will make it less. <laughs> Tron marketing is not great anymore. The, the cancel of uh, Buffett lunch is a marketing failure. Uh, yes, I know. I mean, I went to uh, to Buffett lunch, but then they canceled it when I was in SF. It it was really a bad thing because we traveled so far just to go and uh, and be with Warren on the press conference. Then they canceled it. So yeah, that was very 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 unfortunate. But look at how much they got from the Buffett thing. I think it's still net positive for them. Even I mean, look at everything else. Look at everything else we have here on uh, on the coin market cap. Look at all other coins. They're still number eleven. I mean. Look, <laughs> It's, it's something that you cannot deny that all, all of the controversial stuff that have happened, they're still, you know, higher up than Cosmos, than Chainlink, than Tezos. And you can argue that these guys have much better technology than Tron. They're, they're better than so many other things that are here, like Monero. What is Monero even nowadays? You know, it's number 14. So look, many people can argue that Monero is so much more useful than Tron, but it's not, it's not the fundamentals that matter, at least in the short term where we are right now. Uh, so you, you kind of need to look at it from a bigger perspective. Libra copied Neo. Uh, I doubt it, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, how do you mean? I doubt it. I doubt it. Is there any blockchain election cheat proof system? Uh, is there any project that you know of that is developing this anti-political corruption? You can build the election on any platform, but at the end of the day, it's all about how do, how do you manage uh, private keys? So you could build it on Ethereum. You could maybe even build it on Bitcoin, but that's going to be super e expensive uh, with fees. But it's all about how do you manage private keys? And at the end of the day, it's it's not applicable yet, at least, because how do you distribute private keys? How do you make it really work? How do you ensure that people don't just copy their private key? It needs to be tied to identity. So as long as we do not have true identity protocols on top of Ether, it will not work. So we need to have identity being built built up better. And look, we have we have seen a lot of different concepts within crypto. So for example, you have decentralized autonomous organizations. So DAOs have been really performing well with MakerDAO and DeFi. So DAOs have proven themselves. It works. And a lot of developer mindset, a lot of thought and a lot of resources have been have been funneled into DAO, into concepts such as MakerDAO and other decentralized autonomous organizations. Not enough thought process, not enough uh, uh, capital, and not enough developers have been focusing on identity. So this is the next thing. I think it will come, but it just takes so much time to really cover each and every area. So as long as we do not have identity, we will not have elections on the blockchain. So this is the next thing, really. Uh, politicians want... Uh, it doesn't... Look... Uh, Overall, technology moves forward and overall technology, if you zoom out, technology makes everything more efficient. We as a human race will always become better if you zoom out. Sometimes we do mess up. Sometimes we have periods where we enter you know, dictatorship when we, when we enter uh, world wars. But if you zoom out, the trend is always better. It's always forward. So yes, they might want to resist short term, but long term is going to be transparent. Long term is going to be solved. But short term, yes, I agree with you. Uh, what are your thoughts on ADA in the crypto world? Uh, too much research, too little delivery, <laughs> basically. But good things take a lot of time to develop. But at the same time, uh, I mean, they need to they need to deliver. Where is the delivery? Monero long term perspective. Um, Depends, man. It depends. I think they're going to be delisted from many exchanges, unfortunately, due to regulations. So I think there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, at least that, that's how I see it. Uh, look at the exchanges Monero is on right now. Uh, market pairs. Let's see. Uh, I mean, they are on um, Binance. They are on Hobby, HitBTC. Kraken still has Monero. But I think it's just a question of time before many of these uh, exchanges will have to delist. Unfortunately, it really hurts my soul to say it, but look at Kraken, for example, they're very, very compliant. They are based in the US. At least the CEO is based there. They're really distributed and they, they don't really have offices, but they have a lot of operations in the US. I mean, 
because the CEO is based there. So you can argue that they do have kind of base there. Uh, and so when the travel rules, travel rule really comes into play and you cannot track even transactions on Monero and travel rule will be enforced across exchanges, I don't think they will have a lot of choice, to be honest with you. Uh, Bitfinex, I mean, we'll see what these guys do. <laughs> really, we'll see what they do. But overall, I think the biggest threat is that they're going to be delisted. Okay, guys, thank you so much for being here. Zapego, we already did them. Uh, go back in time. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I mean, it's so amazing to be back. Uh, once again, do not forget our academy if you want to get access for free. Uh, and for example, learn how to program from scratch and then learn how to program on Bitcoin, on Lightning, on Ethereum, on EOS. Definitely write what you have learned in this video in the comment section. I will be giving away access to one person tomorrow. And uh, that's why we're pushing it. I mean, I truly, truly believe that it is in the bear markets that you need to do your work. You need to position yourself in in order to get involved as much as possible right now because you will be so much in demand in the next bull market. And bull markets are short, bear markets are long. So really use your opportunity. That being said, guys, have a great, great day. Enjoy your Tuesday. I'll see you all tomorrow. Smash the like, smash the bell, and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.